Okay, welcome back everyone. Let's talk about scientific notation. Here's a essential question. How do we write numbers in science? Because there's a different way we're doing that as opposed to just our regular number in our everyday lives, right? Um, we need a standard way to write these numbers because in America, we write this number as one billion. In the UK, we're the same number though, but they call it one million million. Another example, same thing. In America, this number, we call it one trillion. In the UK, the same number, they call it one billion. So in order for the scientific community to communicate effectively, we need a sort of a standard way to communicate what these numbers are called. Not to mention, it's very awkward to write these, uh, these really long numbers, right? It would take forever. So, and we're not very efficient either. So that's just what we come up with, we call it scientific notation. So take a look at these following numbers. I have 125. Now instead of saying 125, I can write as that uh, as 1.25 times 100. Now I can also write it, even shorten it up a little bit further by saying it's 1.25 to 10 to the second power. Let's take a look at a bigger number. 1250000. Instead of saying that, all this whole thing, I can write that 1.25 times 1 million. And then I shorten it up even further, it's 1.25 times 10 to the 6. So this is what we call scientific notation. It's basically a shorter way of communicating the same number. So we don't have to write such a long number out like this. And also we all know what it means across the globe. Right? So you don't, you don't need to speak the same language to understand what these numbers mean. All right, so how would you actually write the scientific notation? Now there's a general format that we follow and it is this format. So you have this number here, 93 million. And when you break it down, this is from your textbook, if you break it down, um, there's two parts to your scientific notation. The first part is the number between one and 10 multiplied by some sort of 10 to the, uh, an appropriate number of uh, power. So for this one, 93 million, what I, was, I would do is I would consider there is some sort of invisible decimal right here, and I would move it to where until the number stops, where it's a number between one and 10. So let me show you how it works. So this is what you're gonna do. This is your invisible decimal, it's not there. That's why I wrote it in, it's, a, it's an invisible. So consider this right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I moved this invisible decimal seven places over and I reached this part where it becomes 9.3. So the number is 9.3 and the number of times I moved this invisible decimal over, that is the power of your power of 10. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. Will all your scientific notation look like this? The answer is yes. The same format will go with for every number that you're gonna do, but there's a couple of different rules. Um, we'll talk about inches a little bit. So let's take a look at some practice examples. All right, so let's do A. Once again, I uh, you have two parts to your scientific notation with the second part you always know is A, some sort of powder, power of 10. There we go. All right, so remember that we do a little invisible decimal here, and I'm gonna move this invis invisible decimal how many places over so that I get a number to put right here, which is between one and 10. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now, I'm at seven, the number is 97.4, so that's not between one and 10. I have to do one more over, and I get 9.74 times 10 to the eight, because we moved eight places over to get our number that's between one and 10. Let's do this one. So, same thing, invisible decimal, right here at the very end, you move how many places over? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So 
Your number between 1 and 10 is 2.8 multiplied by 10 to the 11th place because we moved 11 places over. So we do the same process for the rest of the example, giving you this number 4.68005 times 10 to the fifth. Same thing here. And take a look at this one. Is this a trick question, Mr. And once again? It's not a trick question. It is just for any sort of number, you can write a scientific notation for it. And for this number, since it's already a number between 1 and 10, when you write a scientific notation for it, all you're going to do is multiply it by 10 to 0. Because then remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So it doesn't change this number at all. It's just write it into a scientific notation. Take a look at 120. You would assign the uh, invisible decimal over two places, giving you 1.2 times 10 to the second. There you go, and this is the answer for G. Now here's a big question. Why does only one of these have zeros in the scientific notation? And it's this one. Notice how for that, the first part of this number, it has zero in it. None of the other ones do. Right? Now, that is because zeros have their own rules. So let's take a look at what the rules for zeros are. So let's talk about the rules for zeros in scientific notation. The first rule we have is when you include the zeros that are between non-zero numbers. And then you also include the trailing zeros only if a decimal is present in a number. So let's take a look at these examples I have on the board right now. So we have some numbers here with zeros are between non-zero numbers like this one, right? And then I have also numbers that have trailing zeros, like the rest of them. All of the rest of A, B, C, E, F, G, all of them have trailing zeros. Now, only some of them, though, have a decimal point in the number. So for example, B right here, you have a decimal point here. And F, you have a decimal point here. G, decimal point here. Can you guys see that for the one with the decimal point, you keep those zero, the trailing zero, in the scientific notation? So let's take a look at A and B. A is the one where you have a trailing zero, trailing zeros, multiple, but you don't have those in your scientific notation. These are gone in your scientific notation because there's no decimal in this number. As opposed to B, where we do keep this trailing zero, it doesn't go away when you put it into scientific notation because the rule says that when you have a decimal here in a number, the zero stays. So same thing for C as well. You have a trailing zeros, but because there is a decimal point right here, you keep them in your scientific notation. So those are the rules for zeros in your decimal on your scientific notation. Let's move on to let's practice. Okay, so we we've done the big number we transfer it to scientific notation. What do we translate to scientific notation? Let's do the opposite, where I give you the scientific notation, and you give me the number. So for example, for a. I have 3.754 times 10 to the fourth power. Now, just like how we did it with scientific notation, when we count the number of places that you move the, that, uh, the decimal to give you this part of the scientific notation, for this one, you do the same thing, but now you move the decimal back. So what's gonna happen is I know that I have to move the decimal four places over because of the four in the, um, the 10th, part of the scientific notation. So here's our decimal. I will move it one, two, three, four places over, and that will give you 37,540. Now notice, when I move this decimal over, there's nothing here, right? And whenever there's nothing there, you know that that's a zero. So that's how you got that. Next example, same thing. This number one here tells you you have to move it one place over. So simple enough, one, the decimal is right here. You move it one place over, and the answer is 18.0. Can you do the recipes? Try to do it right now. 
and here's your answer. All right, let's talk about scientific notation for small numbers. Now we did, we've done so far, we've done this for really big numbers. Now, but for small numbers, it could be very, very, very small. Something like, okay, so this is point, uh, 0 0.0025. The more zeros you have right here, after the decimal, is the smaller the number is, right? And it can, be, can get very, very small in chemistry because everything's minuscule, right? Or microscopic, we can't see them. So we do the scientific notation for them too. And we follow the same rule for small numbers as also big numbers. So for not small numbers, let's do A. You do the same thing, the same format applies. The first part has to be a number between one and 10. And the second part has to be the 10 to whatever power it is, or however, however many places you move that decimal. So for this one, I move this decimal over, so this decimal is right here. I move one place, two places, three places, and it gives you 2.5. And the same thing here, you do 10, but in this case, because it's a smaller number, it's not, you do it to the negative three instead of three, because this is a number that's below one. So that's the difference here. This is a small number as opposed to all the big numbers we've done so far. Take a look at the next example. So for this one, here's the decimal point. I move it one, two, three, four, five. I move it five places over, giving me this number, which is definitely between one and 10, and my, uh, times 10 to the negative five. Right, we move five places over, but because it's a small number, it ha it's a negative ten five instead of just a regular plus five. And we do the same thing for C and D and E, giving you these answers. All right, you guys, more practice for you. So here's the practice problem. Go ahead and try it out right now on a piece of paper. And here's the answer. Guess what, you guys? More practice. So this one, you do it the, the other way around. I give you the numbers, you give me the scientific notation. Go ahead and try it out. And welcome back. Here is your answer key. All right, hopefully you guys got all that right. Now, can you, let's do a bit more practice, but doing it different, in a little bit differently. Can you arrange these numbers from largest to smallest? Now you can translate them back and forth from scientific notation to a regular number. Can you, but do you actually understand their magnitude, meaning how big they are, how small they are in relative to each, in relative to each other? So I'm gonna give you a list of different numbers in scientific notation. And I'm gonna ask you to arrange these numbers from the largest to the smallest. Now, how would I even tackle this problem? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look first at the 10 power because that will tell me how big or how small the number is. So the, uh, the one with the big, the smallest number, and I'm seeing it's right here, 10 to the negative eight, negative eight is the smallest number out of all of these expo uh, exponents. I would say B is my smallest. Oh, it's more down here. B is my smallest number. Now, then I'm looking for my largest number. The largest number should be the one with the largest exponent. And the largest exponent I'm seeing is C, where it's negative one. So negative one is bigger than negative five, negative two, and negative eight. Okay, now let's check out we got number one. That's the largest one. So let's look at for the one that's the second largest. So, and I'm seeing that's negative two. I don't even need to look at these part of this part of scientific notation for now, because just judging on the decimal point, I know that E 
for the, the number with tangent negative two is the second largest in this series of number. So you go, second largest. Now you get to this point where like, oh, but both of these have tangent negative five. Now how would you figure that out? Which one is the smaller one, which one is the bigger one? Now this is where you do have to look at these numbers. And 1.89 is definitely bigger than 1.0. So D would be our third largest number, followed by A, which is second smallest. And there you go, there you have it. Okay, can you guys try out this next set of series of numbers? Go ahead and try that out right now. And here we go, let's hear the answer key, welcome back. There's your answer key. And for this one, you have a mix of variety of things, right? You have both negative number and positive number, but you should be able to tell that seven is our largest number, followed by three. And for three, you do have two numbers with the same exponent. That's why you have to take a look at this part of the scientific, uh, scientific notation. And 7.11 definitely is smaller than 8.35. So that gives you this order of from largest to smallest, right, and so on and so forth. All right, so here's just a note for you guys for exams and quizzes. So now the use of scientific notation is definitely required for all numbers greater or equal than a thousand or less than 0 0.1. Now you don't use scientific notation on your exams and quizzes where apply meaning that when the numbers it's either greater or equal to 1000 or small, smaller than 0 0.1 you will get no credit so make sure that or you know some kind of credit uh, deduction so make sure you do that on your exam quizzes also just like how highlighting and you know under, uh, what is using a diff different color font goes scientific notation can be used for any number like we talked about before it could be used for 125 it can be used for 1.5 so they will, ne we will never deduct points for if you don't use scientific notation, but if, you, but if you don't use it where you really need to, where it's required, then you will definitely get points deducted. All right, so make sure you use it. You know it's better, save and sorry. Use it for all, everything if, if you feel like you don't know when uh, to use scientific notation, but definitely no points deduction if you do. All right, thank you guys, that's it.